Good morning. Morning. Good morning. This is the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy, and it is always a joy to be here amongst all of you. Um, are there any joys or concerns? I have a few announcements. Thank you. Yes, sir. My nephew has been accepted to U.S. Legal Academy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just found my oldest, my oldest son, youngest son. Son. Well, not a grandson. I mean, not a grandson. He's older, so he's older, grandson. Okay. And then I've got a person accepted his name. And his name? Uh, Nick Lamb. Nick Lamb. Curtis's uh, great nephew. Grand nephew. Great nephew. Has been accepted into the Naval Academy. So keep, uh, oh, Dad Nevin, I forgot his name. Nick. Nick, Glenn, in your prayers, as well as the family. You'll be for the next four years. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be in there for four years, so just keep all of our service people, men and women, in your prayers. All right, Sue. Yes, ma'am. Um, first of all, if we keep all the, I say people Kentucky, but not just Kentucky, the Midwest, with, um, in our prayers for the disaster. Mm -hmm. Uh, I heard this morning they talk about the Maysfield Presbyterian Church, and my heart just broke. Um, but I do know PDA, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, how's that? Yes. Who got there for you? Good job. They're always there in these uh, situations, yes. and um, they can always, always use your donations. So I have a joy that Ms. Maya is here with me today, and Maya made the All County Chorus. Oh, yes. Yes.
for a total of 41,620. We are more than happy to take uh, pledges from the rest of you. Then, the longest night or blue Christmas is going to be celebrated on Sunday the 19th at 6 o'clock. Then, on Christmas Eve is the Shepherd's Run. Please make home baked cookies, candies, and Christmas goodies and have them at the church by 6 o'clock on uh, Christmas Eve, December 24th. The making of the trays will begin at 7 p.m. and delivery is 5. Drivers are needed too, and they return back here by 11 o'clock that night. These are to take to the people who have to work on Christmas Eve, and especially our police and fire and emergency. Um, word is statement with people that have to work and serve on Christmas Eve. So keep them in your prayers and also, like I said, cookies, candies, any little goodies that you might wish to make. Uh, the group will meet in the parlor and load up trays to take out to them. And then the Christmas Eve worship with communion and candle lighting is 11 o'clock Christmas Eve here in the sanctuary. Any others? Okay. We please listen intensely for the candle lighting, the candle of joy. We're in the dedication first. Oh, the de I'm sorry. See, I already mentioned that that's one just went right over my head. <coughs> dedicate our gifts to you, O oh God. Help us to use them to glorify you, to be vessels of your work in this world. Guide our leaders as they prepare us financially for the upcoming year. Encourage us to see that we are all ministers called into the body of Christ. Use us, O oh God, to do your work in this world. Amen. Joy is making it home when the journey is long. Joy is your dog sliding to meet you at the door. Joy is the energy of a new season. Joy is feeling found if you thought you were lost. So today we light the candle of joy because the welcome God has for us is nothing short of joyful. Rest in that good news. Let it wash over you. Family of faith, we are close to home. Amen. <laughs>
Okay.
Gibson. And you and I know it. Our job as people of faith to create a home for all has never been easy. In our prayer of confession, may we channel some of God that John the Baptist's courage to tell the truth about ourselves and our world. We do not do this to shame ourselves or guilt ourselves for being imperfect. We speak the truth out loud because we know that we cannot grow and change without first being honest. So let us be brave, let us be bold, let us be truth tellers as we confess together now to a God who, could, who couldn't love us more than God already does. Let us pray. Stand God, we know that the church is your house, and your house has room for everyone. Yet too often, instead of setting the table for our neighbors, we block the door. Instead of welcoming all, we judge others by our own standards. Instead of sharing our second coat, we hide it in the attic, holding on to fear.
I'm abbreviating the length of the uh, Old Testament lesson. So we'll do Zephaniah, who's one of the minor prophets in uh, chapter 3. We're going to start with verse 17. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in love. He will exult over you with loud singing. On a day of festival, I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time and I will save the lame and gather the outcast and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at a time when I gather you. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Now the gospel lesson for us this morning comes from Luke chapter 3, starting with verse 1. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region Aturia, and Trachonitis, and Lassanius, oh, difficult words, uh, ruler of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Anna, Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of of one crying out into the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, does not bear good fruit, is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then shall we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not exhort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and awe were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the throng, the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias' 
brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So here we are, the third Sunday in Advent. We're preparing, as I said to the children. All of us are preparing. Bing Crosby, remember him? In 1951, he recorded and released the song, It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas. It's a song that sold four million copies. And it was deemed platinum four times. And even today, we continue to hear this song in the stores, in our shopping, on the radio, and perhaps in our homes. And as we look around, we see all the signs that we're preparing for Christmas. With lights, with yard decorations, with bows, with wreaths. Christmas cards, and yes, music. Wonderful seasonal music that lifts up the joy of this season. And as we pass by homes, perhaps in the evening we can see through the windows a lighted Christmas tree or lights around the window. But we can't see what's going on inside. We can't see the decorations that may be there in the homes or what's happening with preparing for Christmas. And yes, we're busy. This is a busy time. We're busy at home. We're busy at church. We're busy preparing. We're busy shopping, getting those Christmas cards ready. We're busy baking. We're busy gift wrapping and scheduling, but we're also busy thinking about how we can share the joy of the season with other people and share this church does. We are busy about sharing the joy of this season. I mean, just look up here at the growing mountain of groceries that will go to people for Christmas. And in the back of the sanctuary, the alternative gift table with ways that you can share the joy of the season with people beyond this community. And yes, you heard in the announcements about the Shepherd's Run the secret Santa projects that are happening within this church. Oh, there's so much going on as we think of ways to share the joy of this season with other people. So central in our gospel lesson this morning was the character of John the Baptist, sometimes called John the Baptizer. He was preparing the way for Jesus, the Messiah, the one who was to come. Now John, as uh, you read scripture, was an interesting character. You read about him coming from the wilderness and wearing camel's hair and eating locusts and honey. And as Robert said, yes, he was the cousin of Jesus. His message was one of repentance, of turning away from sin and turning toward God, and also baptism. And he presented a point of view to not count on your ancestry for your salvation. He told the people that yes, they were the descendants of Abraham, but each person had to make up their own mind about 
how they viewed God and viewed themselves with God. Yes, God was preparing the way for Jesus through John. And through it all, he remained true to his calling for what God called him to do. Our Monday evening Bible study class talked, uh, uh, explored material written about John the Baptist. <laughs> and the author described John the Baptizer in this way. He was like a smelly, hairy, dirty, homeless man, draped with camel's hair. John the Baptizer is one that we can rightfully refer to as a holy mess. He doesn't quite fit into the image of the shiny, ceramic, nostalgically warm, peppermint-scented images that might come to mind when we think about Christmas these days. Such an interesting way to describe John. All this and yet people came out into the wilderness, droves of them, to hear John preach, to hear John talk about repentance, to be baptized by John. You have to wonder why they kept coming. For that matter, why did they listen to him? Or why do we listen to him today? I mean, this talk of repentance, especially at this time of the year, during Advent, a time when we are preparing and waiting ourselves. And how does joy, the theme of joy, fit in with John? Does he preach tough things about repentance and baptism? How do we live out joy in our lives? At this time of the year when some of us struggle with sadness and grief at this time of the year. How do we express joy when we hear of war and threats of war, hunger and famine, drought? Yes natural disasters like we heard about this week. How do we live out joy amidst all of this that's going on? There's poverty and COVID raging around the world. The psalmist perhaps said it best. How do we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? I suppose John felt that way when he saw what was happening to the people in his time. In his time, he saw just horrible Roman oppression. He saw hunger. He saw poverty. He saw people searching for a better way. And yet he stayed focused on his calling to prepare to prepare folks for Jesus, preparing a home for all of us in Jesus. Yes, he preached repentance, which is a message of turning away from sin and turning toward God and what God intends. He preached a message of good news, of change and forgiveness and justice to a suffering people of his time. This was and is for us today a message of joy, especially for those who are struggling with lost hopes or people who have been hurt by inequities and injustices perpetrated by society.
Dear folks, the world was about to change as John preached. For Jesus was coming. He urged us to focus on God. He urged us to be attuned to God and what God would have to say to us. And he urged us to focus on Jesus, the one who was to come, who was to bring peace and joy and love and grace. Even though we didn't read it this morning, the Revised Common Lectionary Epistle Lesson does apply here. For it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Maybe we do need to revisit John and John's message each year. Maybe we need to listen to what God had him say. Repent. Turn away from what was to what is and to what will be, to turn toward Jesus, to turn toward God, to turn toward the Holy Spirit and what the Spirit says to us. Dear friends, may this season bring you and bring us peace and joy. May it bring a sense of expectation in your life to be reflected and renewing and holy. Amen. Amen. Now we sing a hymn that's rather joyful. Amen. Angels we have heard on us.
We come now to a time of prayer. Let us focus our hearts, our thoughts on God in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, new every morning is your love, great God of light, and all the day long you're working for good in this world. Stir up in us the desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each and every day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. O oh Lord, we lift up our concerns that are on our hearts. Indeed, Lord, we lift up the concern of those who face disaster this week for the loss of life, the loss of property, the loss of the community. Oh dear Lord, we pray for those who are responding to the, these disasters. Lift us up in your care. Help us to be the people that you want us to be. And let us have our prayers in silence. We lift up our prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from hell. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.